I am going to put a Holly ECU on the project that you see behind me that we just started on the channel, which is a 2010 Camaro SS that we are swapping a Vortec 4200 into. That's right, after years of you guys asking whether you can put a Holly ECU on one of these engines, we're finally gonna do it. But they're not gonna make it easy for me. Holly refuses to add support for the early Vortec 4200, which featured a seven tooth crankshaft reluctor. And I, I sort of get it. Something like this is never going to compete with their bread and butter, the Chevy LS series engine. Now what Holly does support is 58 tooth LS engines. And it just so happens that the later Vortec 4200s got the identical trigger setup to the 58 tooth LS. So everything should be good, right? 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 Well, there's one small problem, and it comes in the form of this little solenoid right here. Holly can control the fuel and spark for the later 58 tooth Vortec 4200s, but they cannot control the variable valve timing. And I've been hearing through the grapevine that some of you have been pestering Holly to add support for these engines in just about any form. And I've even been hearing that Holly has told some people that the variable valve timing control will work on the later 58 tooth engines. And I'm here to tell you, it won't. And yes, Holly did add support for the later Gen 5 LT series engines, specifically for the variable valve timing control. And it just so happens that the Gen 5 LT series engines have the same trigger type as the LS, and therefore the later 4200s. So they've proven that they can do it, but they won't let you turn it on. Or at least they will let you turn it on and make you think that it will work, but after you've spent 50 hours wiring your car, it doesn't work. Ask me how I know. This is my 1963 Studebaker Lark that I swapped a Gen 5 L83 into. I am using a Holly Dominator EFI system to run the car, but I originally wired the car up with a Holly Terminator. As most people know, the Gen 5 series engines all have variable valve timing, and therefore I needed to find a way to control it, and I was hoping that the Holly could do it. When Holly added their gasoline direct injection control for these engines, they added variable valve timing as well. And recently they allowed us to move the VVT solenoid output from the GDI controller to the main Terminator X board. So I figured, hey, we can turn all the options on, I can assign the IO, it should just work, right? Wrong. I wired this entire car up just to find out that it doesn't work. And it was pretty clear that they were just looking at the wrong edge of the camshaft. And when I gave Holly support a call, they said that unfortunately the only way that I could get the variable valve timing to work on this engine is if I set my injection type to direct injection. And when you do that, you have to run direct injection. I didn't want all that complication on this particular car and I had chosen to go with port injection and therefore I was out of luck. But why the heck do you even want VVT? It seems needlessly complicated. Just put a bigger cam in it. Well, it can actually be used to make pretty substantial gains to the overall horsepower production of your engine. And you can do that with a much more mild camshaft, which is a lot easier on your valve train. And for a car that is going on a drag and drive, where valve train is the number one killer of engines, that is extremely valuable. Now, if you guys are familiar with how engines work, in a single cam application, a more advanced cam tends to favor lower RPM horsepower production, and a more retarded cam favors higher RPM horsepower production. With a fixed position cam, 
you know, something that doesn't have VVT, you kind of have to pick a happy spot for where you want to put the cam. You either put it more retarded and make more horsepower or put it more advanced and make more torque. But with variable valve timing, why not both indeed? With variable valve timing, I can target a more advanced position and then I can swing the cam to a more retarded position and get the best of both worlds. But in the case of this engine, we actually have two camshafts. And that means that we can change the valve events of the intake and the exhaust separately. Unfortunately, this engine only has support for exhaust VVT, but that's not really a disadvantage. It's actually quite useful. With exhaust VVT, we are changing the exhaust valve events. We can change things like overlap and the cylinder blowdown point. And that can be extremely useful for boosted applications. What we have found in the past is that at lower boost levels, you favor a more retarded position and increased camshaft overlap. This makes the engine more responsive and it spools the turbo quicker. However, as you increase boost, you want to get that exhaust valve open sooner and sooner because you got a whole lot more junk in the cylinder and you need to get it out before we start the exhaust stroke. In essence, what we are doing is we are getting that massive amount of cylinder pressure out into the exhaust before we start the rise of the cylinder on the exhaust stroke and we have to fight all that cylinder pressure as it comes out of the engine. This will reduce parasitic losses in the engine, and we have seen as much as a 50 horsepower gain just by changing the exhaust valve timing. And this is the best kind of horsepower that you can gain in the engine. We are not making any more cylinder pressure with the engine. We are just reducing parasitic losses. We are taking force off of our rotating and reciprocating assemblies, and therefore they will thank us for it. So we get the spool and we get the horsepower. And that sounds like a win-win to me. Going back to Holly's control of the variable valve timing, I think it is an extremely simple fix on their end. I think literally all they have to do is they need to look at the other edge of the camshaft signal. So how do I know that they are looking at the wrong edge on the camshaft position signal? Well, the data is pretty clear. When I was running the engine on my Studebaker, I noticed that the camshaft feedback position was reporting a value of 25 or 85, and it would sort of toggle in between the two. And I immediately recognized this as the wrong edge, and let me tell you why. If we look at our camshaft reluctor wheel, you'll see that it is divided into four teeth. Every single rising edge of the camshaft reluctor is located 90 degrees exactly away from one another. However, the falling edges are located at a more sporadic angle from one another. And what this tells me is that they are looking at the falling edge. As you note, there are two short teeth and two long teeth on the camshaft. Also, notice that the two short teeth have the same width and the two long teeth have the same width as each other respectively. To determine camshaft position, it is wise to use that nice even 90 degree spacing and not the one that is constantly changing. Since I'm seeing two numbers that are sort of jumping between each other, it's pretty clear that it's looking at the wrong edge of the teeth and it's grabbing the uneven edges, which should both report a consistent value and sort of jump in between the two. This is a stock ECU. This is a Mega Squirt Gold Box. This is a Link ECU. This is a Max ECU that's bolted to a Mega Squirt Gold Box. And this is a Holly Dominator. 
Every single ECU that you see here is able to control variable valve timing for a LS series engine and therefore for a later Vortec 4200, except this one here. And it costs the most out of all of them by far. And this isn't even a full list of ECUs that can do that. These are just the ones that I happen to have laying around. So what gives? It sounds like Holly needs to make a change to a couple lines of code and everything will be solved. They have proven that it will work on the Gen 5 series engines and therefore it should be very limited testing that they need to perform. And hey, if you add support for the 4200, you also get support for the LS and LT series engines. It's a win, 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 win. Is that thing rolling? Okay, okay, guys, guys, I figured it out. Okay, okay, I haven't slept for like uh, at least a week. Now I didn't get a lot of classes on physics, let alone that Higgs boson thermonuclear dilithium crystal stuff. But here goes. When I talked to Holly on the phone, they said the only way to make their VVT control work is to set the injection type to direct injection. We just need a high pressure fuel pump. We can get those from the LT series engines. Then we can machine a custom billet cam that has the trilobe design from the LT series engines. Then we need to manufacture a billet cam cover that can house this thing in the right orientation in relation to the cam, of course. Then we need fuel rails that are capable of holding uh, 3000 PSI of fuel pressure, right? Right, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what you can do, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Then we can use the fuel injectors, you know, the injectors from the LT series engines. And we just gotta figure out how to how to get them in there, right? Uh, just find a provision. Uh, spark plug holes, yeah, we'll do the spark plug holes. But uh, where do we put the spark plug? Oh, oh, I know, we'll drill holes in the pistons and then we'll put the injectors up through the bottom and then we'll have a flexible fuel line. So as the engine goes up and down, the injectors go up and down. Uh, that might not work. Uh, oh, oh, we invent time travel. Okay, we just have to watch the documentary Back to the Future and follow Doc Brown's approach. Flux capacitor, yes, flux capacitor. And we'll need a DeLorean, a DeLorean, yes. Uh, man, those are expensive. Uh, it's okay, we can do it. We'll go back in time, we'll make Holly implement the feature right the first time. Hey Bill, Bill, um, how do you spell rising? Is it with one S or two S's? Or is it a, a Z? Yeah, a Z. Uh, two Z's. Yeah, two Z's. You know, like one Z's, two Z's, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Hmm, let me try that. No, that's rizzing, dog. Like, like you know, like, like that girl's got riz. Like, yeah, you know. Um, Brian, you're fired. What, bruh? You capping? Man, this place is totally not busting. I'm out of here. Guys, the real Bill, he's tied up in the closet. Let's get this done. Backspace, backspace, S. All right, we got that one done. All right, while we're here, let's get map based boost control. Go to the dominator code, select all, copy. All right, paste. All right, guys, we got it done. All right, we gotta go back. Are you sure about that? Crap, John Cena. I knew that tying that guy up would mess with the space time continuum. We gotta go. Alright guys, the only reason I'm even making this video is because Holly obviously makes some good ECUs. But there's always room for improvement. 
And if you guys are calling the support line to ask for them to add support for this engine, I want you to be armed with information. Alright, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.